Hi, Mr. Richards here. Today's lesson is on adding and subtracting like fractions. Well, our first example has find each sum right in simplest form. When we're adding fractions, we need common denominators. And these fractions today have common denominators. So if I have 3 fourths plus 3 fourths, what I'm going to do is add the numerators, the top numbers. 3 plus 3 is 6. And we'll keep the denominator 4. 6 fourths. However, this is not in simplest form. We can divide a 2 out of both the 4 and the 6 to get a simplified answer of 3 halves. Now, you could also write this as a mixed number, which is 1 and 1 half, by taking your 3 divided by 2. 2 goes into 3 one time. And you have a remainder of 1. So 1 and 1 half. So 3 halves or 1 and a half is your answer for 1a. 1b, 5 ninths plus negative 7 ninths. Well, let's look at this as 5 over 9 plus a negative 7 over 9. Let's take that negative up with the numerator. And so we have 5 plus negative 7, which is negative 2 over 9. And negative 2 ninths is our simplified solution. There are several different methods in how to solve example 2 when we're adding two mixed numbers. We have 3 and 4 ninths plus 7 and 8 ninths. Now one strategy is just to add what you see. 3 plus 7 is 10. 4 plus 8 is 12 ninths. Now, of course, this is not a simplified answer. We cannot have a mixed improper answer. A couple of different things to do in here. If we divide the top and bottom of the fraction by 3, we'll have 10 and 4 thirds. Now, if I take this 4 thirds, and turn that into a mixed number, 4 divided by 3, you get 1 and 1 third. So the 4 thirds is equivalent to 1 and 1 third. So we have that 10 plus 1 and 1 third, which is 11 and 1 third. That's one way of solving this question. Another way is to turn these into improper fractions. So 3 times 9 is 27 plus 4 is 31 ninths, plus 7 times 9 is 63, plus 8 is 71 ninths. Add those two numbers together and we get 102 over 9. Then, to get this back into a mixed number, 102 divided by 9. 9 goes into 10 once. 9 goes into 12 once. And you're left with 3. So 11 and 3 ninths, which we can simplify by dividing by 3 on top and bottom. For another way to get 11 and 1 third. Now, both methods work for addition. When it comes to subtraction, which we'll have coming soon, this may be the best way, but there is a way to get this to work too. So knowing both can be helpful. And so now as we look at example three, find each difference, 11 twelfths minus 5 twelfths. Well, for this question, let's subtract those numerators. 11 minus 5 is 6 twelfths. And since we're looking to write each in simplest form, if we divide the top and bottom by the common factor of 6, this simplifies into 1 half. What about 3 eighths minus 7 eighths? Well, you can keep change opposite with integers, so you can do that here as well. What if we kept 3 eighths, changed our subtraction into addition, and the opposite of a positive 7 eighths is a negative 7 eighths. 
And so now we can just take 3 plus negative 7, which is negative 4 eighths. And dividing by the common factor here of 4 gets us a final answer of negative 1 half. Evaluate each expression of r equals 7 and 1 fifth and q equals 9 and 3 fifths. Well, substitute in. q is 9 and 3 fifths minus our r of 7 and 1 fifth. Now, I prefer to write these vertically, 9 and 3 fifths minus 7 and 1 fifth. So can I take 3 fifths minus 1 fifth? Yes. 3 minus 1 is 2 fifths. And 9 minus 7 is 2. So 2 and 2 fifths is my answer. In our word problem, Kiora bought 3 and 3 eighths pounds of apples. If she uses 1 and 7 eighths pounds for a pie, how many pounds of apples does she have left? Well, we have our 3 and 3 eighths minus our 1 and 7 eighths. Now there's two different methods to solve this. One involves mixed numbers, one involves improper fractions, and I'll show you both. You have to be careful with the mixed numbers though, because I can't just look and go, okay, I have a seven and a three, so it's gonna be four. Be careful. Your question is, can you do three minus seven right now without getting into negatives? No, you can't. So there's a way to borrow. If I were to take a whole unit away from the 3. If I took a whole away, that's 2. Now, a whole, in this case, is equivalent to 8 eighths. 8 eighths is equal to 1, and that's what I took away from the 3 to make it a 2. Why does this help me? Well, this becomes 2 and 11 eighths minus 1 and 7 eighths. So now I can take 11 minus 7 to get 4 eighths, and 2 minus 1 is 1. Divide the top and bottom of this fraction by 4, and we end up with 1 and 1 half pounds remaining. So when using mixed numbers to subtract, you do need to be careful to see, do I need to borrow? Can I take 7 away from 3 without borrowing? Now, the other method, as I mentioned, is improper fractions where you don't have to worry as much about borrowing. Well, worrying at all, really. Well, why worry? Anyways, 3 times 8 is 24, plus 3 is 27 eighths, minus 1 times 8 is 8, plus 7 is 15 eighths. 27 minus 15 is equal to 12 eighths. If I divide out a 4 on top and bottom, this becomes 3 halves, which is equal to our 1 and 1 half we found using the mixed number method. So again, you can solve subtraction questions by using mixed numbers. Had to be careful to borrow, though. Or you could also use improper fractions. Both methods work, both. and it's good to know how to use both of these methods. So as I look in example six to find distances between two points on a number line, find the distance between each pair of points and simplify if necessary. Well, for negative three-fifths and two-fifths, we have a common denominator of five. And so if I were to draw a number line, I'll put zero here, one out here, negative one over here. We're going to divide this into different parts. And the way this is going to work is think about one fifth, two fifths, three fifths, four fifths, five fifths. I need to bring in four lines here. So one fifth, two fifths, three fifths, four-fifths because one is equal to five-fifths. And I do the same thing going back to negative one. Or, yeah, negative one-fifth, negative two-fifths, negative three-fifths, negative four-fifths, and negative one since negative one is 
negative 5 fifths. And so as I look to plot these then, negative 3 fifths is here. while 2 fifths is right here. And this method literally wants us to count how many spaces do I have in between our negative 3 fifths and our 2 fifths. Well, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I have 5 parts. And each part is a fifth. And so this is five parts over the five, since we're divided into fifths. And so our answer is five over five, which is also one. So how far are they apart? One unit. And that is it for this lesson on adding and subtracting like fractions. Good luck.